Hello students. In the previous lecture, we have completed the various activities that is divided by Henry Fayol for the successful implementation of principles of management, right. We understood the concept of uh, that what are the activities that is going to be undertaken under in a specific business unit, right. Now in today's lecture, we are going to learn the administrative principles of management given by Mr. Henry Fayol right see there are total 14 principles are there right but in today's lecture i have only covered the seven principles of management okay if i take 14 then it will be too lengthy video right so starting with administrative principles of management okay see whatever the principles that has been developed right that was totally new but that does not mean that the principles given by mr taylor that is the scientific principles of management they were wrong right that new study that has been done by mr fayol and he has what he has developed the new principles right so what he believed he believed that for a successful manager to become a successful manager right only the knowledge is not essential right see as i said that theoretical knowledge it is not there management is about what management is about art that how to getting things done through others right you are you need to require what you need to require that art you need to require the special skill so that you can what you can implement the principles which are going to help throughout the business unit okay right and and a specific method that need to be or that need to be adopted by whom by the managers so that with the minimum cost maximum output can be achieved Maximum output that means what that productivity productivity of employee that is productivity of workers and the productivity of the whole industrial unit that can what that can be achieved or that can increase okay right so what he says he presented 14 principles for what that is what that is proved very useful right that if I want to start any kind of organization or a business unit then I will go for what I will go for these principles of management these principles of management they are what they are the directive principles that means that they are the guideline okay, how a manager should commence his or her work right by going step by step all these principles see flexibility it will always be there because we have already seen in the concept the principles of management they are flexible right so flexibility will always be there okay uh, up to what extent the principle a uh, specific principle can be implemented in any kind of business organization right see type of a business they are different but ultimately the management that is what that is the common thing that is universally accepted right so this principle will help the management will help the manager to overcome what to overcome the that difficulties in what in implementing the work that is why these principles they are also known as what they are also known as the administrative principles of management Mr. Taylor, Frederick Taylor, he was known as the father of scientific principles of management, that is scientific management. And Henry Fayol is known as administrative, that is father of administrative management or the principles of administration that is given by whom? That is given by the Mr. Henry Fayol. Okay, right. And success of these principles right that up to what extent it should be implemented what is the principle that will be best suitable for the organization that depends on what that depends on the sharp sense of the management right see these are the guidelines but the effort that need to be done by whom that need to be done by the managers right? that is owners if they are doing it so correctly efficiently then obviously that success it will be there right so starting with the first principle that is division of work Division of work that means what? Yes, you need to what? You need to filter it out all the activities that need to be carried out throughout the business unit, right? Okay, suppose I am manufacturing a particular cell phone, then what are the activities I need to purchase? The raw material, I need to have that production process unit, I need to have that particular staff, everything. Just get that thing, all the business activities and then divide the work. Divide the work. Divide the work amongst whom? Divide the works amongst the different departments right that we have seen in the middle level of management right that various departmental head production purchase uh, finance marketing sales right what is that thing that is a division of work okay, the person who is having a specialized knowledge and a skill about production they will be what they will be in the production department right getting my point and it is necessary for what purpose to increase the efficiency of employees and managers 
राइट कि सपोज आई एम गेटिंग दैट थिंग कि यस आई एम आई एम टीचिंग द इकोनॉमिक्स एंड ओ सी सब्जेक्ट राइट सो दैट इज वॉट दैट इज अ डिविजन ऑफ वर राइट दैट आई कैन वॉट आई कैन गिव यू द बेस्ट नॉलेज दैट आई हैव राइट एंड एज आई एम टीचिंग फ्रॉम लास्ट अराउंड सिक्स ईयर्स ऑब्वियसली देर विल बी वॉट देर विल बी एफिशियंसी दैट इज गोइंग टू इंक्रीज एज वेल एज स्पेशलाइजेशन विल बी डेवलप getting my point okay one thing continuously you are doing the same thing for a over a long period of time so what you are going to get you are going to develop specialization right as i said specialization can be achieved through what through the division of work right that a person continuously doing the same work for a over a period of time and for a long time then obviously he is going to what he is going to develop the specialization right because okay, suppose i am teaching this subject from the uh, that from a long time so obviously that specialization it will always be there right okay first i need to check out whether reference book and everything and everything i need to learn i need to read right same way when a person is doing in a, suppose for an example ke okay, labor is involving in a production process he is handling the machines for the first time so it is possible ke okay, his speed will be low right it will be slow then after over a period of time it will be there getting my point right and and it should be done at managerial and factory level to take the what to take the benefit of principle of specialization right okay, yes middle level management the different managers right they will be what they will be dividing the work amongst them right for what purpose to take out the benefit of specialization and same way the sub division that is the workers they will be what they will be appointed in below that particular in their uh, respective departmental head under the respective departmental head okay getting my point so division of work that is what that is going to help in what to get the benefit of specialization okay that is the first principle right now the applicability of division of work it can be what it can be vary from or business to business or organization to organization right if it is a large scale business division of work must be there if it is small size no division of work will be there right that we are going to see that is we know that like it is a, the principles of management they are what they are flexible okay then second one that is authority and responsibility we have seen in the levels of management that is what ke by levels of management that are created for what purpose for the delegation of authority that means ke the one single person a single owner with the increasing size of the business unit it is not possible for them to handle each and everything so the delegation of authority that is going to require okay right and power and responsibility is authority and responsibility are two sides of a same coin why why i am saying this that is because higher the authority higher the responsibility right that a top level management they are having what they are having the highest authority so they have that particular what they have that responsibility of the whole business organization right they need to give answer to the various stakeholders they need to give answer to their employees they need to give answer to the government getting my point so the responsibility is high compared to middle level and bottom level their responsibility is too high right once it comes down towards the middle level and the bottom level slowly and gradually authority and responsibility is going to decline only administration work will be more no management will be there right and and power without responsibility and responsibility without power they are incomplete now understand this statement that is what okay when you assign something or some responsibility suppose for an example ke production departmental head is assigned the task by the ceo or by the general manager that is you need to what you need to produce 2000 unit in a particular 10 days or a 20 days right that is the responsibility so accordingly that authority need to be given that to whom to the production departmental head ke for how many hours they are going to take work from their workers what what is the amount of raw material that they are going to purchase what is the new technology that they want to introduce into the particular production department for a production process right this authority need to be given to him if not given then responsibility will not be fulfilled so that is why it is been said ke by yes principle power without responsibility and responsibility without power they are totally incomplete you are assigning something you are assigning the responsibility then yes there must be some sort of authority need to be there okay, i have assigned the subject of oc then it is my authority that how to teach you okay i don't need to ask and go and say yes sir shall i do that shall i do this okay getting my point so same way when the power is assigned responsibility always comes with it higher the authority higher the responsibility right but but while assigning the power while assigning the authority 
what are the things what are the parameters that are that a particular top level management they need to consider that is the post of an employee knowledge qualification experience art of leadership and most important that is maturity see all these things that need to be or that need to be taken care of right okay, we cannot give up the particular authority to a newcomer or the new person who is going to handle all the things for the first time because because uh, it is not like a trial and error method right because we need to what we need to take the benefit of the specialization and accordingly we need to what we need to assign the powers right we need to like to look at the particular position of the particular person of the employee and if it not doing so then then this principle can reverse it back right that proper decision are not taken at the pop, uh, proper time at the specific time then target should not be achieved right getting my point and and due to this that is due to uh, that, you know delegation of authority and the responsibility goal achievement it becomes what it becomes easy why because work that has been divided right and accordingly we have what we have distributed the power authority and the responsibility so that respective various departmental heads they are going to do their task as per their conveniency right and as per their goals that has been set right ultimate goal is what ultimate goal is to what that is the development of the organization development of the company the common objective the common goal of everyone right yeah sub goals it can be different right but the common goal that will always remain the same so the objective that is the common objective that can be achieved by the company by the business unit with the help of what with the help of delegation of authority and responsibility simple distribution of power with responsibility that is called as what that is called as authority and responsibility that is delegation of authority and responsibility okay moving ahead third discipline discipline that means carry has to control what to control the human resource the manpower and the material right for what purpose to to coordinate and for the smooth working of the business activities discipline is necessary right it creates what it creates a harmonious environment because everyone knows ks yes, we are going to have this much of a time break we are going to have that work uh, whatever the things that will be there ks yes, this this is the you know in time that is the out time we have this much of a break time then how much uh, uh, liberty that a person is going to enjoy towards the work right everything that is what that is created right and industrial discipline they are going to what they are going to establish through a certain kinds of rules and code of conduct okay, suppose for an example okay, yes there is no un unnecessary movement will be there right even you know that some uh, you know uh, when you go into the company there is a specific uh, tagline that is given okay, no smoking allowed right uh, there will be n uh, no entry without any kind of permission right getting my point no entry without permission everything that is what that is there is a particular rules okay suppose for an example okay we are we are studying in a school so you have what you have the discipline case from 750 to 230 you are going to sit in a school you're going to have that proper uniform that proper haircut and everything that is what that is a rules that is a code of conduct ultimately it will bring what it will bring the discipline getting my point right so same way some sort of rules that need to be what that need to be created that need to be established for the purpose of what for the purpose of industrial discipline right and that whatever the rules and regulation that has been established that has been created whether they are following or not for that what is necessary that is supervision and a contact between workers and the owners and then to look okay, whether the implementation of punishment will always be there okay, if someone is breaking the rule right then they need to what they need to take a two punishment that will be given that you guys all know right that if you break a discipline that what will the thing that is a omissar will come and omissar will hit you back right getting my point so that provision of punishment will always be there for what purpose to develop the self discipline amongst the workers right self discipline ultimately when they are, they are going to develop the self discipline ultimately it will create what it will create a harmonious relationship and because of this the goal achievement that is going to become easy because no unnecessary movement will be there no unnecessary wastage of man hours and a material it will be there right and and when employees are more obviously this thing is become very necessary right okay, discipline can can be uh, implemented through what through the code of conduct okay, everything the general guidelines the general rules and regulation that will be what that will be published that will be implemented so that so that the self discipline that can be right getting my point then fourth one an important one that is unity of command now what is unity of command this what this principle says that 
the workers they should get what they should get the orders only from the one superior that is one employee one boss right okay, suppose a particular products and department team they are working as a they are working as a one group then they need to follow what they need to follow orders from whom they need to follow orders from the of their products and departmental head only right okay, no orders taken from the marketing marketing departmental head sales departmental head or a finance department head right so what what fail suggested fail suggested that okay, for any kind of job activity all the employees or the group of a person they need to what they need to follow the order from only the one single person right getting my point and same way employees they will be what they will be responsible to only one superior for a particular job right if i am assigning the task in the subject of oc then i am the only one who are going to take that analysis you guys are going to submit the particular that whatever the task that i have assigned to me only right you don't need to discuss with anyone because it is my subject getting my point right <coughs> and what is the main benefit of this principle there is no confusion that is going to arise ever in the mind of the employees okay suppose for an example like some other person they are coming in the departmental department like products and department and giving the order so it is clear that okay, we need to follow what we need to follow the orders that is given by our products and departmental head no other orders will be followed getting my point right and and if more than one orders are given are assigned then what well, ultimately it will create or it will create the confusion in the mind of the workers right and that is going to what that is going to create unnecessary chaos unnecessary conflict right amongst the employees also among the departmental heads also okay right okay yeah you need to follow my orders i am the who one who is the senior other person is coming no 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 whatever he is saying no don't, don't take it into consideration right it is my subject whatever the things i am telling you need to do that only it is not that like that right fell has suggested ke bhai yes common objective there need to be given more importance so a person who is a who, who is handling a production department he is only going to give order to the production departmental team not any other person is going to give order to them so ultimately what it will reduce the particular confusion from the mind of one from the mind of the employees or the workers so that the achievement of goal that can what it can become easy it will reduce the conflict it will reduce the chaos between the workers as well as from the various departmental heads the coordination that is going to increase the harmonious relationship that will be established right then next unity of direction same way just like a unity of command right see uh, management it starts with what it starts with the planning that is what ks it is about it is outline for the future okay whatever the events that can actually happen for the future in the future right that need to be what that need to be that we are planning we are preparing for the future okay right and sometimes deviations will be found right when deviations will be there so according to the particular that functions of management direction proper guidance that need to be provided now who is going to provide direction who is going to provide that particular guideline obviously by whom by the superior authority but who is the superior authority that respective department suppose for the confusion is arising in the sales department then they should be getting the direction they should be getting that particular guideline from whom from the sales department or head their respective head or the particular the leader who is handling the team getting my point right so there should be only one superior to the employees group and group should doing job for only one purpose right okay, if i have assigned the project right okay, suppose that uh, five of a people they will be what they will be doing a, a particular project on that uh, uh, banking system or the everything right then what will be there then obviously okay, there will be what there will be a particular group will be created right so who is the superior superior is me right if you have any confusion if you have any uh, that uh, particular doubt then what you are going to do you are going to ask me only one superior will be there right so ultimately what it will reduce the confusion in the mind of the people okay you they know okay as whom they need to go home do they need to go and ask the questions about if any confusion is there right so same way there is unity of command and unity of direction that is same but what is the main difference that he has given what he fell has suggested that okay, there should be a group that need to be created and that group must have what must have a one superior who is going to give guidance who is going to give direction time to time right then next is subordination of individual interest to the general interest right see 
as uh, Taylor uh, Taylor has suggested that right, there will be there will be harmonious relationship between owners and the workers. So same way, all what he suggested, the management is a what management is a collective activity where both the efforts of owners and that workers that need to be what that need to be get together and collective activity will be conducted, right? But ho what he has suggested. Each and every, see, if a person is an individual person, they are entering into the company, they have their individual goal. Okay, suppose I am entering into the organization, I have my own goal. Okay, yes, I want to get that higher level of position. I need to get that better salary than the other person. Everything that I have in my mind, right? But these all sub objectives, these all goals are subsidiary. That means secondary. What is the main motive? What is the prime objective for the organization? That is their development, their own development. Right. If any conflict that has been arised between the individual goal and the organizational goal, whom they are going to give importance, they need to give importance, that is owners or managers, they need to give importance to whom, they need to give importance to the common objective, that is organization objective. Let me take you, let me give you a simple example, right. Okay, suppose for an example, we have a budget of a sales departmental head where there is a vacancy and we are going to what, we are going to provide them a 50,000 of a salary, that is the budget, that is the objective of the company. But the person is demanding 70 to 80,000, right? Then what we should go for? We should go for this case. Yes, we are going to give only 50,000, not more than that. If other person is there, then they are going to take it, right? If strike is there, the people, they are demanding more of a particular thing. Yes, we need more salary. And if it is against the objective of the business, then they should be removed, right? So ultimately, this ob this principle, what it says, okay, when whenever there will be conflict between individual goal and the organizational goal, organizational goal must be given, what must be given more importance or the prime of that importance than the individual goal, right? All the other goals, they are what? They are subsidiary. Getting my point, right? And as I said, okay, common interest should be given more importance instead of a individual interest. Then no individual goal is as much important as the organizational goal. Okay, right. And seven, that is remuneration of a personnel. What is remuneration? That means salary, right? That whatever the service I am doing, whatever the uh, work that has been assigned to me, I am doing it, right? I am accepting the, my physical labor or intellectual work. In return, whatever I am getting, that is my remuneration, whether in the form of a salary or whether in the form of a wages right and, and to maintain the skilled manpower there must be what there must be an ideal payment of wage that is ideal wage system that need to be or that need to be established and because of this the harmonious relationship or a stronger relationship between owners and employees can be established right okay, suppose i am doing my job i am doing my work sincerely efficiently i am not doing any kind of mistake and i am getting a proper salary enough salary then obviously there will be no question of a dissatisfaction. I will be satisfied, right? I ultimately see what we all are doing. We all are doing a service or they, we are employed in a business, in employment, in a profession. For what purpose? To get the monetary return. And if those monetary return, they are satisfactory, then obviously there will be or there will be more job satisfaction that is going to increase, right? So remuneration of a personnel, for that the ideal payment of wages need to be what need to be right and those efficient employees who are giving more production doing more work they must be compensated against their efficiency right that the technique that has been given by mr taylor differential wage study that skilled workers they will they must be given more wage or more salary than the unskilled one right okay suppose for an example i am doing a work i am not making any kind of mistake doing a particular uh, job or a task in time then it must be what i must be getting a higher amount of salary than the other one okay got my point right so efficient employees they must be what they must be getting the proper salary or the remuneration right ultimately the labor turnover rate that is going to decrease right i have given you this thing i have make you understand the, the term the turnover rate that is the number of employees leaving the company during a specific period of time right that is called as what that is called as a labor turnover rate if proper remuneration is given see 80 percent of the cases that people you know they are dissatisfied with their job because they are not getting the proper wages they are not getting the proper salary right and that is why they are going to change the job but if managers or the owners they are going to what they are going to understand the part of whom they are going to understand the part of the employees or the workers they must be getting a proper wages that is remuneration and due to that the labor turnover rate that is going to what that is going to decrease 
right? We have seen in this thing in the part of a staffing, right? Okay, it is a what in, in the HRM also human resource management of the first chapter that it is a what it is a uh, invaluable asset of the company of the organization, right? Getting my point, right? And for that, what kind of promotional schemes that will be introduced? That is bonus, profit sharing, representation in the managerial committee that should be implemented for a skilled workers, right? Bonus that means every one uh, once in a year that particular. Uh, Employees, they should be getting what they should be getting a bonus, okay, one and a half a salary in advance or two salary in advance, right? Profit sharing, that means okay, by whatever the amount of profit that is being generated by the company, equal profit sharing will be there for the efficient workers, right? And representation in a managerial committee, okay, when they are going to take a decision, these efficient workers, they need to be what they need to be given a chance to take part in what they take a part in that particular committee, right? So ultimately, it will what it will increase or it will boost the moral of the employees. Right. This is also see financial that is they have to increase the salary, but this thing that is bonus and a profit sharing, they are also called as what they are also called as the financial incentives. But this met representation of a managerial committee, it is a non-financial, but it is also going to prove very efficient or effective in when it comes to when it comes to what when it comes to the job satisfaction. Okay, right. So these are the seven principles that we have done today. Next seven principles I will be taking up in our next lecture, right? And and Go through these seven principles. If you have any doubt, let me know. Okay. Thank you.